we're doing something special today. We're going to be doing a little bit of Lutris modifications. I think we need to add a game. There's this little weird indie game I found, and I was like, oh, I'll just install it with Lutris. And it wasn't on there. So I was like, hey, let's uh, let's figure out how to support Lutris. We're going to log into Lutris and add this game and, and see if we can't write an installer for it. So if someone else out there wants to play this same indie game with me, we could play together. I think that would be pretty awesome. So that's uh, the idea for today. Just kind of pimping out Lutris. I think it would be a, a neat addition to kind of what all we're doing. Um, let me log in real fast and we'll do that. And I think most of this is like on their wiki page, like actually writing the bundle. Uh, they do have like one of those. If we go learn more, I think we can get into their wiki and uh, do some other stuff for actually adding the game. The game itself is called Embers Adrift. It's like an old school MMO. Think of like EverQuest 1 with less funding made in 2022. <laughs> so that's like a, a neat indie game. But I noticed there was no Linux client for it, or at least I think no uh, published Linux client for it. And I was like, hmm, I tried it on my Steam Deck and it worked fine. So I know this does work and I think it uses Unity 4, uh, which Unity engines are always like weird. And why, why you should know the game engine that your game runs is because Unity has some weird tricks to it, especially when it comes to Linux. So most people think you should always want the native Linux client. And that sometimes is the case. And sometimes the native Linux client is better but a lot of Unity games, the native Linux client is trash. Or it, let's just say it, you lose performance unless you were just using uh, the, the DXVK Proton, you know, through Wine, uh, you know, Windows version of that game. It'll actually run better. The Windows version will run better on Linux than the native Linux package. It's just a Unity game thing. I don't know what it is. It's not all Unity games, but it's a lot of them. And uh, this one, I noticed the native Linux client was uh, poor, poor performance. So I don't even, I don't even think we'll make an installer for it. We could, uh, we'll depend on how hard this is. We might. How's everybody doing? Let's check in with chat today. See how, how we're all doing. We're back in Linux. Oh, geez, really? I hate that you have to do this every once in a while, but you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm using Thorium. I like Thorium. I think they're, it, you know, it gets some criti criticism, but, you know, it works really well on all my Linux instances, and I'm, I'm, it's my favorite browser. It just is. Uh, well, for what game is the script? We're gonna try Embers Adrift. Kind of weird game, indie game. I think it's free to play right now, but uh, I've been playing it a bit. I loaded it up on the Steam Deck, and. Uh, it's a Windows Windows Mac game, but it does have like a weird unsanctioned Linux client. I think one of the devs is a Linux Linux fan, so it does have like this experimental Linux client. I tried this and didn't go over all that well. <laughs> so I was like, mm, we might look at incorporating that, uh, but this would also have to be added as it looks like a patch on digital oceanscapes just kind of tossed up there and i want to say the download rate was terrible uh, where their official windows version downloads really really fast so i remember this took like two or three hours to download for some odd reason it being only five gigs which uh was kind of strange but maybe it was just last night and the fact they're doing like a free to play right now uh, let's make our Lutris installer. That was kind of like the purpose or what I thought of for this stream. Um, because I wanted that, that game Embers Adrift to work. And I didn't see it in here. So we're missing a game. So let's see. Embers Adrift. Uh, let's add the game. Name. Embers. How do you call it? Embers Adrift. Release date is... It was actually the end of last year. The developer, I think it was like an indie team. Who made it? Let's go. We'll fill all this out, I guess. 
Who's the company that made this? I think it's like an indie game that is Stormhaven Studios. So is it indie dev? I think it's only 12 or 13 devs, but they they made it. I actually went on a big rant lately on the gaming channel about um, Pantheon not having a usable product after 10 years of work. These people have been at it for... I don't know, I think only like a couple years and they already have a whole world you can just jump in and play and it's even better than Pantheon. So I'm like, why? What's the deal with that? Bunch of scammers, I think. Um, there's no, I don't know what the publisher is. Let's just go with the website here. It's not really filling in. So let's go here. Platforms. It's going to be Windows and Mac, actually. Mac OS genres uh rpg or i think actually mmo rpg description let's get a description going here it's kind of a neat uh so what they did is there's no magic users in this game too i'm gonna just fill this in and we will create this game and get it going for they probably should have done this themselves but that's okay they're they're busy doing other stuff <laughs> we'll put all this in here it's kind of cool going from the dark land and like embers invade the land or something kind of neat all right shoot all right uh game title 184 by 69 image format oh uh, uh, i guess we'll make that for i'm sure <laughs> we're just gonna do everything for them it's a cool game but it's super indie so don't think it's gonna be like polished with triple a um let's make 184 by remind me to change my mouse cursor i can never see this stupid green one all right 184 by something um probably go let's just go a little bigger i guess save that and gimp i don't have gimp what uh-oh um Actually, uh, open build service. Is it OBS? No, OBI? Oh, what's the open build thing with the OPI? Open, open package installer service? I don't know what that means. All right, let's look for GIMP. GIMP number one. We'll go with the main repo. Triple A titles and polish don't exist. Point taken. That is true. <laughs> that is a thing of the past. Well, this is a little bit rougher around the edges than most triple A titles. If we get the installer script working, I'll load it up for you guys. It definitely has some like old school EverQuest vibes to it. You use Hackenide. Let's see. Yeah, I, I just didn't like some of the the other stuff here let's see aconite cursor let's switch our cursor out okay kind of windows 3.1 era i don't know i lived through that era i don't really like it that much um let's go with like a let's go with a little bit more pop what's everybody's favorite cursor this is just a little too like that's too rounded Probably original wouldn't be that bad, but I don't like the black cursors. I want something again that's <laughs> that's funny. Uh, simple cursors. You know what? I'm a simple guy. Let's just do that. Simple cursors. Oh, they got a Nord. Nord light. Modern white. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try simple Nord light cursor. Let's see what we got. Let's open up that we do have some some weird stuff happening when I pull up the file now oh, look at that yeah there it goes it does open up quite a few of them so something's up with that so we got simple light um, oh we don't have like arc here let's grab arc I guess we could have done file roller I always go back and forth between arc and file roller heretic crossbow <laughs> Oxygen yellow, that's a good one, bud. Let me look that up. I wouldn't be against the yellow one. The green one just sometimes blends in when I get a screen fade, and I don't like that. That's why I thought, hey, let's 
Let's just do that. All right, let's try this now. All right, we got this guy. We're going to extract to uh, local, usually. Let's go a local share themes. Let's extract all these guys. So if we look at local share themes, kind of weird. We got to look at our share themes. Ah, we're about to switch anyways. So we have this theme, which I think is good. All right. So from here, we'll just do like Alex appearance, mouse cursor. Huh? Maybe we install it from the downloads. No, well, that didn't work. What am I missing here? Maybe is it tar XZ? And I think this one's a uh, tar GZ. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Tar tar XZ. Let's just uh, change that. That's the wrong format. I don't want to. You know what? If we look at uh, our bash RC, I'd swear I made a tar uh, command MK tar MKGZ will make it. Okay. So let's fix this. We're just going to go CD share themes. And MKGZ, simple. Car okay, what was the what was the hiccup there? Let's see. And if we look at TARS syntax, you go, you make the GZ path and then the directory. So probably the best way to do this would be TAR, G, or was it, uh, what was the... MKGZ, oops, MKGZ, that sets all the variables. Then we make our, um, we'll, we'll put this in home, downloads, we'll call it simple nord.gz, uh, tar.gz, and then we're gonna go dash, dash, uh, directory. I think there's a short command for directory, but whatever. Uh, what was the, it's kind of weird. There we go. Refusing to create empty. Does this need like a full path? Let's go PWD. Huh. CZVF. Yeah, the CZVF should be right here. Tar Z CZVF. That's what that alias is. So it should technically make it. What did I do wrong? I guess we could, maybe it just didn't grab, it, it, it could have just not liked this PWD. Huh. Yeah, yeah, this is where it's specified. Extract, I compressed, oh, okay. Create a gzip file from a directory using relative path. Is that a dot right there? So m maybe the relative path is just this? Oh, okay. Weird. I guess I haven't compressed that much. I don't know why that syntax is so different from what I was envisioning in my head. Anywho, done now. Now let's install it. <laughs> let's go downloads, simple Nord, open that bad boy up, and nothing. All right. Well, that that was that was underwhelming. Uh, <laughs> let's see if it created the proper one. This is gonna turn into a two-hour stream on how to actually do zip files. That's what it is. Maybe it needs the folder. I would imagine not, but maybe can we make a directory and just add it to it? Maybe not. Eh, well then. Just do Coco install winget. Oh, oh, I can't. Oh, let's see. Anyways, oh, uh, you know what? We're not gonna do it this way. We're just gonna we're gonna just fix this. Let's do it through the OCS way, right? The proper way. Let's get OCS URL. Um, I bet that's an OPI. Let's uh let's see, OPI OCS dash URL. Let's see if that's uh in any of the repos. Look at that. It's in a couple. I don't know if I like using this repo system. Whatever. Let's go. S Falcon. 
That's from uh, Falcon. Why does that sound familiar? That's Falcon. Isn't that from that Matthew Broderick 1980s film, War Games? Falcon was the father of the creator of the engine that... Mm, I don't know. I got a bad feeling about this. Let's not do it. Yeah. I don't trust them. Let's just download it and install it manually. <laughs> uh, let's grab the RPM package. Uh, grab that guy. Uh, we're installing the RPM package here. Which is OCS URL. All right. Nice. And what else did we need for OCS URL? Okay, so now we have that. Let's go back. You want to install? Okay. Install successful. Cool. So now we should have fixed it. OCS URL is pretty clutch, man. Look at that. Apply. Yeah. It's great for applying themes. Um, I think I still have to re relaunch everything. So this keeps the old theme. So as soon as I like launch it and then relaunch it, it grabs the new. It's kind of weird that it holds on to that. So here's the old theme. Let's uh, go to that. Chatterino. Cool. Kind of, kind of cool. Oh, wait, nope. Uh, maybe I have to reboot. Yeah, it's not installed as a system. It could be. I think also um, on reboot, it should be fine. We could find where simple simple uh, cursors went to. A black cursor can also be uh, an X set issue with Xorg. Usually, if you go into like, uh, let's just jump to DWM Titus. If you go into my scripts, and if you go cat auto start, there is usually this one right here. X set cursor left pointer. This usually fixes the black cursor that you could get when going like this. Black cursor usually gets fixed by doing the X set uh, left pointer. So if we do that, do it again. Uh, I think, oh wait, no, I did not. For some odd reason it grabbed the cat command before this one. Yeah, no, still didn't grab that cursor. Okay. And this one's still breeze. Strange. Anywho, let's fix that Lutris now or start making. Oh, crap. Did we not submit that? Oh, man. We did all that. And, oh, I forgot to add it to database. No. Nope. Darn it. Okay. So let's go Lutris again. Why didn't I submit it? Fail. Uh, what, what's that cat command? It's actually bat cat. Yeah. Lovro. Lovro got it. Bat cat's amazing. All right. Embers adrift. We'll make this again. 2022 website. Embersadrift.com. All right. Windows, Mac, Mac OS. Perfect. Genres, MMORPG, and then for description, we'll just grab, let's just grab this right here. No fantasy, no mini maps, no, I think the map it has, but it doesn't give you an location of where you're at on the map, so you kind of have to do that. It's all group based, you can't solo this game, and it's super immersive. So just think EverQuest back in the 90s. Bam. There we go. I like that. Um, banner should include the game's title. Make sure your banner doesn't rely. 18469. Let's use GIMP here. I love GIMP. GIMP's just the best. And did we put that in pictures? Yeah, we did. Perfect. All right. Let's go. Image, canvas sign. Ooh, okay. Um, let's scale the... Scale it to 69. Nice. Scale this to 69. Oops. Let's go image scale. 69. Release. And then what was the other? 184. So 
Let's see about going. 184. Does that give us enough? There we go. Resize. File. Save as embers. And just save that as a JPEG. And we should be good. So we'll go pictures. Embers JPEG. Open. Uh, I feel like that should look better. Why does that look so meh? Ah, well. We'll roll with it. The team can fix that. This game's already in our database. Okay. Great. Write a new install script. Runner. We're going to use Wine. Uh, version's going to be Windows. All right. Content. And here's the installer instructions, which is great. They give you these great, and they kind of put it in a weird iframe though. But it's a YAML format, kind of kind of very familiar to Ansible playbooks if you've ever messed with those at all. You can set up specific variables, resolutions. Yeah, version is, no, this has been going for, this is actually just celebrating its first year. It's just a very small indie game. Mods and add-ins, extensions, game directives. I feel like we should just grab somebody else's game that installs this method. Um, trying to think of another one that would run this way. They want to use an MSI file, but that doesn't work very well. So you have to use a, a model to install it, which already has the extracted executable. Um, but I got all that already in the download so if we hit like control j you can see this is the full patch right here that we can pipe into it the last one i did on lutris that i can think of was a final fantasy one they do a pretty good job and i think that one runs as a setup almost so let's look at this and let's come over to lutris again and we'll grab like an old game that would probably be close to it should be like this guy I know is, uses a really old one uh oh that's an interesting okay maybe not that one I just want to see the script I thought that it would show the script here but it does not I wonder why I think Lutris changed their website a little bit I still don't see that all right Sample Lutris script. Oh, okay. It was there. I just didn't see it. Let's see what we have. I, get, I don't think I have Thorium set as my default browser. I'll have to fix that. Yeah, it's there. Thank you for that. So let's just look at the US version here. Let's just see the install script. So these are the files. Game directive. EXE. Okay and then certain tasks that need to come after it. That's a, okay. Let's just toss this in here, Colin. And then you look at that and then we come to the executable part and we're gonna want the download. This will break, but, oops. I can't really copy that for some odd reason. That's okay. Uh, we'll go patch patch.embersdrift.com patcher win 106. Uh, patcher.embersdrift.com and oh, just patch and then comes patcher win. Okay. Win 106 and we'll test this out too. And then it comes embers adrift launcher dash win dot zip. Something like that. That looks good. Oh, that's true. I could do an inspected F2. Good point, Ta. Always coming through with the good, good ideas. All right. And then comes the game itself. I think we, we need to do the launcher because the game itself is something different. And we have to extract this first wine executed exe and then comes wine the msi file it makes me think that maybe we could get away with doing the msi from embers 
if we do an MSI ex executable instead with a QI, I don't think we need to do Q because Q is quiet and I just install the file. We might be able to get away with just wine execute or just a MSI exe. Okay, let's try this. I like this idea. Uh, let's go embers adrift and um, one second. They put my stream key on the account. I kind of hate that, the game key. So I have to kind of block that out. And if I click download, I think it actually, yeah, I think it actually shows my stream key again. Let's see. Okay, it didn't. Okay, good. So we'll have that. Let's fix this launcher to be an MSI file instead. This will be easy because it won't need updates after each uh, patch. So technically this would be better. I've never done it this way. So we'll have to, we'll have to see. So patch.embersdrift, patch or win, but then it's just embers-adrift-setup.msi. So embersadrift.com, patch or win. And then instead of the zip file, we're gonna go embers adrift setup.msi. Just like that. Perfect. So then for the installer game, let's just copy this. Game's gonna be kind of hate putting in this program files and such. And it doesn't matter since this is Linux. So I probably would do something like embers adrift. I know using caps is kind of cringe, but desperate times, def desperate measures. Uh, I don't know what the exe for. All right, so the patcher would be be easier if I just installed it first, but I kind of want to leave it off just so I have something to install. I guess we could always use a VM too. <sighs> Welcome back, Solo. I think it's just embers adrift launcher.exe. Let's see. Then we got the installer execute file. Or actually, that's a hard link. We don't need to file link that. So I think we're going to go installer task and then do this dash i without the queue and then put these in. Just gotta watch because it's YAML, you gotta watch your spacing. Remove quiet mode. We'll put installing embers adrift. We'll leave those all the same. We'll make cache embers adrift. And this MSI file should be the same as that one that it downloads. Bam. It's like an indie MMO. Then we could add, add other tasks if there was certain files missing, like if it was like Visual C++ 2015 or something like that, you'd probably add it here. This is like running wine tricks if you wanted to go down that path. This one's like right here, wine tricks, description, app. Uh, so it'd run the name and then do everything else. So this does wine executable using everything and then runs MSI exec with these arguments, which should technically work. As far as overrides, we're not going to be using any um, game slug embers dash adrift. I'm not sure on the runner in this script down here. It doesn't seem like you would need any of that. Let's I think we've gotten a good syntax here. Let's just look back through here now. You got that. When you have games with multiple executables, a game that comes with a map editor. And, oh, okay. So that's different. Change that up if you wanted. We don't need to do any overrides. I think it works pretty pretty much out of the box. On one. Fetching required files. Files. And then the directory. Okay, we're going to save this as a draft. And then we're going to try it out. I don't, I think I'm still missing some stuff here, but looking through the documentation, we should be pretty darn close on the script because really all you should need would be the top one to say the slug, the script for the actual game, the game executable. I think I have wrong. I kind of guessed on that one. 
we might need to do a working directory as well um because that would make more sense so if we look at ours we have the game prefix but then you have working directory and this should be embers adrift like this but technically you don't need to use the working directory if given the executables there but the prefix is there mm, i don't know on that that's another maybe gotcha we don't have any arguments to go with it files installer man i feel like that's pretty good though looking at a lot of these examples down here let's give it a whirl let's go save draft invalid installer script what don't put a version field in the script okay don't put a game slug field in the script file installer is referenced but not used okay don't put a name field I'm getting the getting the feeling I don't need any of these fields I added from their wiki file installer is referenced but not used anywhere ah okay so the installer needs to be done installer chmod x installer file we need to do an execute so this right here does the task <sighs> all right execute arg gog extracting files extract i feel like this should be a little bit different like instead of task maybe we would do execute execute and args description and file so instead of doing wine x right here that's the executable but maybe we just do file I don't know if that'll work it feels like that would be a little bit a little bit better file installer is referenced but not used anywhere huh what gpt to the rescue let's see what it can do with lutris <laughs> uh it's the first time trying it all right fix this lutris script go my minion do my bidding all right here we go let's see if lutris likes this invalid file installer is referenced but not used anywhere all right let's see what gpt says about that okay it's doing some VC run time executable. I mean, that's not actually that bad of an idea. Core fonts is kind of needed. A lot of times it's referenced in games. Let's try that. There we go. Test installer. Open Lutris. All right, we got Windows. Install games in Burrow Drift. Continue. All right, it's going to download Proton GE. Documentation will be three years old. True. I think G is GPT-4 any newer or more up to date? All right, so now it's downloading the MSI, setting up wine environment. Then after this, we should get the installer. All right, now core fonts is done. It should kick over to the MSI. I don't know, core fonts is still going. <laughs> I can't remember if GPT-4 is three years old, just like GPT-3.5. I want to say four has a little bit more recent, but it, maybe not. I like to post memes on, on on Twitter. You know, it's that one meme where the guy's sitting there holding back like all the missiles, except GPT writes your code. And then all the missiles are coming from the other way that says newer than three years old. But I don't think most of this has changed syntax wise. All right, we're now we're getting the VC run, which most of this should kick off without any issue. The thing I don't know is the MSI file and what error we're going to get into this. Uh, distro Sousa is based off of Slackware, right? I want to say it was based off, originally based off Slackware. I think it might be its own thing now. It uses Zipper. I think you can install DNF on it, though, if you're like a Red Hat person. All righty, that's looking good. Man exited code. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. Command exit with code two three two two three two nine six. Let's see if GPT can make use out of that. 
error command exited with code two three two nine six check wine version check wine dependencies run in interactive mode instead of using the qn silent fat if i try to run the installer in interactive mode without any ui flags this will give you additional prompts i like i like that check file paths permissions so on this one let's set all that up we got our tasks all right let's try our new one all right i was thinking that qn was a little bit off let's save that draft a vm i prefer to use is qmu just a linux qmu kvm type setup that usually is something i enjoy the most so we're going to install this oh let's just abort actually okay test installer let's push this to workspace 2 windows embers adrift continue review install blow out the packages again i'm tempted to take oh no same problem let's see if we can make this a little bit better same error can you remove core fonts and vc run 2019 from installs from script let's try and make this a little bit faster because we're gonna have to run this a bunch yeah boxes use qemu same technology different front end like if you're using qemu you could use boxes you could use vert manager virtual machine manager that's another good one um hell you know proxmox uses qemu as well if you want a full operating system for it embers adrift underscore msi wouldn't that argument be off let's see here that looks wrong wouldn't the cache file actually be this correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure i don't know uh touche it uses it references the file right here yeah that's kind of cool never mind i'm sorry gpt you're right i'm wrong all right let's test the installer uh we'll go back abort yes let's test the installer again so close yeah we'll get it um this path contains files installation may not work properly let's go into our games let's what, do I, what was i doing here my goodness all right just trash all that start from scratch let's see what we get so i want to see an interactive install prompt here same error on the exit process start f-sync up and running okay all right make sure let's see path the game is right sure wine is configured properly and that the wine prefix is set up properly same error test download path maybe kind of a the download maybe i'm gonna do it one more time i'm gonna change a couple things do it one more time and then before i delete the game files i'm gonna look in and see exactly what it's doing in that prefix there i think there's some misstep there that i am overlooking but let's let's ask gpt one more time um 296 or the msi file manual install attempt try to install the msi file manually using wine and terminal and see what error messages it provides i like that idea shouldn't need wine 32 bit it should be 64 bit arch architecture i mean the game came out in 2022 gpt4 is trained with 2021 okay yeah i like this idea let's see if this would even work as i really i think actually we should be able to just do the prefix setup all of that here so let's manually do it make sure we're telling lutris the proper thing is the msl file already here we have the zip file uh, we have the msi file 
So we're going to set up a new wine prefix equals, um, we'll just say home downloads embers uh, forward slash, uh, that'll be our prefix. And we're going to go wine, let's see, wine MSI executable forward slash I. This is where we go with the path, which would be embers adrift drift MSI something like that and this should set up a wine bottle under embers directory run the MSI and let's see what that comes with okay install wizard embers adrift install finish that seemed to work so let's look at drive C did it do it program files program did work perfect right embers adrift launcher exe and then we have the installer very very good so let's see if it would actually patch everything on launch we're just going to do and instead of this time we're not going to do msi we're just going to do wine and specify embers adrift launcher exe perfection so this would download all the assets and we'd be good i really like the installer for the even though this is an indie game i really like the installer for it uh vmware is what i recommend for windows for virtualization uh disable mango hud in the wine runner settings and looters maybe good call i did see the com complaint uh it complained about that so we'll quit out of this very cool that the MSI works. That means this will be a universal installer and it'll just work forever. Very, very simplistic. So that did work. Let's go installer. This is what that looks like. This executable, this spaces might mess it up though. That's one thing I'm not 100% on here. The executable game mode, Embers Adrift. Embers Adrift Launcher.exe. Let's ask GPT. Yeah, it shouldn't matter with the YAML. That's a good point. Yeah, if you use Hyper V ATOP, I would highly recommend um, making sure you change your scheduler to classic. And there's some other optimizations you need to do to make sure that it's performant. A lot of people complain about performance in Hyper V, but that's because they're just doing it on like a stock Windows 11 install and it runs like poo. Yeah, enhanced mode sucks. Agreed, 100%. Yeah, it, it's very old school HGH. So if you didn't like like old school EverQuest, you won't like this game. <laughs> very indie, very old school. But that's like right up my alley. I love just games that buck the trend. <sighs> okay. So this did work. We just gotta get it going. Let me think... What can I do with this cache? Why is that not working? Embers adrift, MSI, create prefix, installer game, all correct. See, this is what I love about it is you can think of different questions to ask and it kind of spills it out and kind of teaches you how the install process works in Lutris. Because I was like, what is this cache variable? How does it work? Anytime you use the files task right here, it puts it into the cache variable. So this would be all right there. That, that makes sense. Old Zork. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I haven't heard about Zork in forever. One of the first uh, in MUDs. Which I never really played much of the MUDs back in the day in the 90s. File setup game installer. That's crazy that the MUDs are still online and still available. That's so cool. Yeah, almost all of it's abandoned where I'm sure, and you could just grab it. Uh, 8.9. My idea now is maybe the Lutris grabbing of... Um, grabbing the new Glorious Egg Roll, maybe that one's causing problems. Is when I'm typing wine in here, the wine I'm using to launch... It works great. So I'm thinking we just grab wine 
819 like this. Come back into here. It says staging dash. Um, I think we can just do staging 8.19. So we'll just go 8.19. Let's try this. I feel like that would be better. Oh, it's not available in Lutris. Not available. Okay. What's available in Lutris? Let's look at the runners. Um, actually, I think we can grab the runners from the settings. If we go runners, come down to wine. Let's see what we have available. Glorious Egg World usually does a pretty good job, but I don't like to lean on him too much. So let's see what we have. Right now it's 8.2. Can we do custom? No. Let's try Proton Experimental. I think that it can grab the Proton ones. Um, let's come over here. Change wine to Proton Experimental. Ah, it doesn't really want you using Proton. Oh, Fin D. No, I have not, Next Programming. I'll have to try it out. Yeah, this is just going to want to do GE again. Ah, <sighs> darn. Okay. Let's just save this draft. Let's just call that. Okay. Let's go test install. Embers Adrift MSI install. Continue. And install. So I think this is going to error out. Give us that 23296 error again. Yeah, 23296 error. Let's see what it looks like, though. What is happening? Oh, and we also got to change the Mango HUD. Let's try that real fast. Sure, let's remove the game files. I like how we have it going really quick now so we can cycle through and try new things. Let's launch Lutris by itself. And there were some complaints about uh, Mango HUD. And I think we can disable Mango HUD. Perfection. All right, we can save that. Let's close. See if we still get the Mango HUD errors. If not, we can pipe in, I think, dollar sign Mango HUD equals zero. And I think that would disable it. See, there's Mango HUD still. Okay. Alrighty. We're gonna disable system HUD Mango HUD, Mango HUD zero. Save that, let's test it out. Now we shouldn't get any of the thing. I think we're still going to get the same error, but it should not have the mango HUD stuff. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that does work. Our limit. Nice. Blah, blah, blah. 23296. Why? Why does this not work? Let's see if we can't just copy the command it's running, which would be this right here. Okay. That's much more interesting. Okay. This is much... This is very helpful. Yeah, no, that's a variable that gets set in a death, so I'm pretty sure that's okay. The main issue I see here is it I don't know if it's that that version. What if we did this instead of using this GE wine? What happens? Or we could specify a different prefix. I it might not be grabbing and creating a proper prefix. That's also an issue here that we might be running into. But just to double check that, let's just grab this last part right here. This wine exe. And this time, it's not going to use GE. This is going to tell us if the GE version or our version of wine. So this will be wine right there. Yeah. So that doesn't work. But if we go like wine prefix equals, um, let's do home embers. Let's create a whole new bottle. Still crashes. So it has to be the uh, MSI file, correct? So if we just remove embers, I remove uh, wine too. I thought you went back to using window. No, man, I've always I've always used both. I've always been I always use both. I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I still use Windows. It's just a lot of times not my first first choice. Can you silent install with the MSI? You can, but I'd prefer the interactive to be honest with you. 
uh, GPU pass through in Windows. I don't know if you can pass through PCI in, in Windows. I haven't ever tried. Seems like a fool's errand. Because who who wants to run a twenty four seven Windows box with PCI pass through? Not I. I'll do that in Linux all day long, but not not Windows. Typically, if I'm spinning up uh, VMs in Windows, I like to like to kind of have it all separated out. Oh yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I don't still do it. I, I'm probably going to do it again. It's just I haven't had the time to set all that back up. My son wanted a computer, so I just grabbed the GPU out of it. So I'm waiting to get a new GPU. As soon as I get another GPU, I'll, I'll do it again. So it's something in Lutris this just does not like. What is it it doesn't like? Let's look at this. This is something where... Is it that simple? The syntax is off, I think, actually. I mean, let's just do a wine MSI executable install embers. If this works, then I know it's, it's a simple syntax error. Oh my gosh, why is it something stupid like that? Damn it. I'm going to hear about this in YouTube comments and be like, Oh, Chris, you're a big idiot. Oh, it's always something stupid. Jeez. All right, cool. This is going to work. Are we ready for the magic to happen? This is not running the MSI. This right here, this variable, while it downloads this file, this is actually just creating the directory embers adrift MSI and then putting the MSI file inside of it. The args here... I mean, let's let's just make sure. We'll just test it real fast. But I I bet you money it's going to work now. Installing game data. And... Yeah, buddy. Installation complete. Let's launch it. There it be. We have a functional installer made for Lutris. Very nice. All right, we'll quit this. Um, let's do one more test. We're going to take Mango HUD out because there's going to be people that probably want to use it with Mango HUD. We're going to test the installer one more time. Um, oh, let's come back into Lutris. I mean, it's kind of cool. Kind of, you get to see the back and forth there with it. Let's remove, uninstall, and delete. Yes. We'll go ahead and remove, remove. Perfect. All right. Save the draft, test installer, install, continue. We should still get the Mango HUD errors, but it should proceed with installation and a basic launch. This is a pretty clean install, though. There's not very many Lutris ones that are this straightforward. So it might have taken us a little bit, but man, that's, that's pretty good. I like it. Yeah, I think we submit that for publication. It will be made public after moderator review. Now we got to see if this, this game works, I guess. Well, the installer is the big thing. Uh, once it launches into this screen, it's it's pretty straightforward. We made a script to make Windows a little goofy, but great performance alternative. Oh, man. All right, let's see what you got while we're waiting on our installer. Oh, no, you're good, man. We do a pretty good job here on the channel of moderating links and stuff. Well, let's just go over to number two, right? What do you, what do we do here? A learn attack. Goofy being goofy with Windows Part One. Let's see. Did you decluttering or debloating? <laughs> I like this. Of course, Linux is not even debatable. <laughs> oh, no, that's good. I like it. Legendary launcher used for for debloated uh epic games. That's nice. So you got your markdowns. What's the release exactly? Let's see. Why don't you have your batch script in here? That's kind of weird. I guess I, I need to I need to learn more about the releases in GitHub. I haven't I have not uh messed around too much with it. Let's go downloads. And what was that called? Goof, task kill, explorer, task kill, 
font driver host. Okay. So you're just killing two processes? So you kill them, run your game, and then then go. <laughs> yeah, only run when the game is open. I can see how that could improve performance. There's probably a more elegant solution there than doing it that way. Probably setting up a, a kill of Explorer and launching like Steam Big Picture might be better. There's probably a lot of... Yeah, you know, I often thought about doing a project like this where we strip down windows, remove all of pretty much all the basic stuff, especially like Explorer auto launching, and then just have Steam launch uh, and be the, the driver for everything. Yeah, no, no, to totally get it. Here's my DWM. Oh, okay, let's see. Take a look at everybody's everybody's GitHub. I love GitHub projects, man. That's so cool. I, I love it when people take something and then they just go with it. All right, you got install, run. In order to connect DWM to a specific display. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. You're, you're using the XInit. Uh, there's a dependency for XInit RC as well. Little known fact, XInit RC does not get executed unless you have uh, I can't remember the package actually. Um, I think it's a zipper search X in it. What was the? Oh, it was actually X in it. <laughs> you actually have to have the X in it. So you can actually install X org without X in it being installed as well. So I know on Debian, I think it's not X in it. I think it might be like X in it dash scripts or I can't remember exactly the, the package for it. But it's a, a little bit different, I think, than just X in it. Or maybe it is the same. Shoot, I don't remember. I've slept since then. But yeah, so then you launch your little script. Nice. And DWM. Solid. All right, let's see what uh, you did with the config. Let's just look at the raw file. Actually, this is not the way to look at it. This is the way to look at it. Gotta look at it in NeoVim. All right, you going with smaller size 10 damn you must be a 1080p gamer or i'm an old man and i like my things blown up whichever pick your poison on that let's see what are you doing doing no cursor off no blank dkms so your screen won't turn off alacrity instead of kitty chad move dunce for your notifications pycom for your trans okay you're an nvidia user i'm sorry uh you got your background script, Faye BG. You're using Network Manager for a little Network Manager applet in your task tray, running your status, and then Dbus just kind of makes it to where you can pull up your file browser and some other quality of life. All right, let's see what else you got. Rules, you get Thorium browser, nice, brave, Thunar, no floating. Uh, Alacrity is terminal and uh, okay, nothing, nothing really out of the ordinary there. You have a script mod key Z to set your background. If you like it, hate a background, you'll go a different way. You have both Brave and Thorium installed right now. You launch Brave with mod key control W and that screenshot. Uh, we have to look at your screenshot script. I'm kind of, I wonder how you do your screenshots. There's always fun, fun different ways. Nothing else here. Um, that I see that jumps out on me. Yeah. Uh, mod key is just like the Windows key. Uh, you, instead of calling it Windows key, you can call it Super key. You can call it Mod key. You can call it a lot of, lot of different names for it, but that's what it is. It's just the Windows key. Usually, sometimes you can buy Mod key to something else, but traditionally that's what it is. Tried readwise, man. It took me a while to get on a fresh RSS. I definitely want to look at that. I also was looking at uh, a terminal-based RSS reader with like images that we could toss in a kitty. That'd be kind of fun. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. I, I mean, I, I took the Android D bloat to. Uh, are you using the tool A top for the Android D bloat? That's a big one. We're still downloading over here. All right, let's let's see if this game plays, right? I think we spent all day making a Glutris launcher. Let's see if we get in. We go log in. Chris Titus Tech. All 
Alrighty, here's my, my little supporter guy. I'm gonna heal her. I always choose healer. Especially for group-oriented games, just because nobody wants to be a healer. Ah, oh, there we are. It's very indie. There we go. Let's uh, go options here. She weapons on looting. Let's make some basic, basic fixes. Uh, UI scale. Let's scale that up a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm an old man, so I gotta go a little bit. <laughs> go a little bit more on my scaling. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Okay. Graphics. Uh, let's crank this up. Let's go 60 FPS. Let's go high fidelity. Um, clouds, volumetrics. That sounds all good. Let's not do reflections. Not worth the performance hit. Uh, vegetation. Density. Let's go very low. I don't like a bunch of plants everywhere. Audio, the effects in this game aren't great, so let's turn that down. Environmental effects sometimes can get a little dicey, too. Let's adjust that. Alright. Now, we are ready. Now, we can solo a little bit for the first five levels. I'm not actually level five, about 50% in. Tab targeting, just run up. Oh, I forgot to take off the tutorial hits. Let's go. Let's go interface. High tutorial pop-ups, there we go. Alright, and combat, let's take that over here. Perfect. And it has a torch. Oh, that's cool. The thing people aren't going to like is when it gets dark, it's hard to see. That's actually by design. So then when you pull it out, you have to put your torch away and you're like blind. <laughs> <laughs> it's such such a crazy game. Uh, I'm not going to play. I'm not going to play for very long. I, w I just wanted to test it out for you guys. Uh, to make sure that it plays good on Linux. I figured it would, but I just wanted to make sure. Oh, we're at 18 FPS. <laughs> Dude, okay. Look at that, we're pegging it. Oh my. What happens when we bring the torch out? Oh. Dude, I need to get like a 4090 for this game. Alright, so not 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 the best optimized. And on Lin on Windows, it's not much better actually, so. That's funny. Alright, let's say we let's bring it back to a balanced. Okay, now we're at 40, 40 FPS. Let's see if it's any better. That guy's, that guy's name's you. Ah. Alright, here's a thief. Let's kill this thief up here. Wait. We might get social aggro. These guys sometimes help each other out. Oh, crap. I got two of them. Well, let's see what we get. Yeah, a little bit better, isn't it? Oh, that guy heals. That sucks. Very engaging. Oh, this is a 5700 XT. And man, it is just choking right now. That is hilarious. Alright, come on. You got this, buddy. I believe in you. Alright, now we got the runner. This is like the percent chance to actually win the battle. I don't know. It's not looking very good right now. Ah, oh, we got this. Uh, 
Oh man, I know. In the in that some gameplay for you. Eight arrows. Got to press T to bring the the torch back out. Let's sit over the campfires. Of Ember. Ah, uh, yeah. Nighttime kind of sucks in this game, but very very old school. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna play. I just I wanted to show this is an indie game I found very reminiscent of EverQuest, and I was like, I love it. I'm gonna play this game. I'll play it on stream or something tomorrow. Uh, but I always reserve Tuesday, Thursdays for just tech streams. And, uh, yeah. The other times you'll see me on. I'm, I'm, I'm almost streaming it daily now. Anytime I play a game now, I'm just like, I'll just stream it on Twitch. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's a poorly optimized game. Even on Windows, uh, it doesn't play well. I do play it on my Steam Deck every once in a while. Uh, because it's, it's pretty low, slow paced. Uh, so that's, that works pretty well. Oh, here's an IP tracker I made. All right, man. I'll hit it up, Plutos. Check it out. Labeled IPT. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, the game needs some work, but it's 12 devs. Their whole team's like 12 or 13 people. They said they would never do a cash shop. It'll be MMO, RPG, only group focus. So if you like grouping like you did in like Final Fantasy XI, EverQuest, that's what Embers Adrift is. But it's super niche very indie based and i was like here take my money i love that i love supporting like these small teams that just kind of make it work and it's not like a kickstarter that's just going to take your money steal it and then never produce anything they actually have the game out you can play it i think right now it's free so if you do if this does sound like your cup of tea and you're weird like me embers adrift uh once the Lutris installer that we made gets submitted, uh, anybody on Linux can play it now. And uh, that would be pretty cool. No loot boxes, none of that crap. So uh, no chronos or anything like that. Uh, you, it is buy to get the game. Like, let's say, I think November 6th or something. I forget. Sometime this week, they shut down the year anniversary where they open it up for free for everybody. And you, you have to buy the game. And I think it's like $20 right now. And the subscription's optional. With the subscription, I think you get like more inventory or something like that. I haven't bought the subscription. I just paid them the $20. And I was like, this is fun. It's like EverQuest with a new skin. <laughs> and it's like EverQuest 1999 with no lightstone. Yeah. The torch does come out. You can press T to deploy the torch. Yeah, I'll stream it more so you guys can get a good feel for it. Uh either later tonight or tomorrow. That'd be fun. Uh, EverQuest question. Did you know it's possible to use Red Guides MQ2 under Linux? Kind of, Chris. The main problem I have is not necessarily getting MacroQuest to inject into the eqgame.exe. It's the actual uh, manipulation I do of DirectX to manipulate all the different instances of EverQuest using like ISBoxer and how it, it ISBoxer Interspace and how it manipulates the, the EverQuest windows so I can kind of fit all of it on my screen in a borderless window uh, swapping ability. That obviously is never going to work on Linux. It's just a bridge too far. Hell, it, it barely works on Windows. <laughs> but kind of cool. And I think if I was going to do EQ, I probably would just probably do like PCI pass through and just do it all that way. One other thing I noticed too was uh, setting the default browser. I want to say that's just a simple uh, update of. Oh, we could let's just ask GPT. Um, I think it's not Dbus. It's set default browser in Linux uh, using terminal. Let's see what GPT says, how to do this. Update alternatives list. I don't think that's going to work. Update alternatives, I believe, is Debian-based. Uh, GNOME. XDG settings is how I would do it. That's the way to do it. And then G settings is GNOME-based. Let's see what we have. Actually, that's pretty good, GPT. Ha! <laughs> that's so cool. Which... Thorium? Uh, desktop 
not located anywhere. How am I spelling? Thorium browser. Okay. Uh, user bin Thorium browser. So we should be able to just go XDG settings set default web browser, right? Set default web browser. And then Thorium browser dot desktop. I think it's just Thorium browser actually. XDG setting not found. Really? Settings. Am I missing web browser? Oh, web web browser. <laughs> uh, that's good. All right. Invalid application name. There we go. So then if we go get Thorium browser is now set. So then if I were to click something, it would open in Thorium. Open link. No. All right. What if we do set? Set it as sudo. Now, might need to relaunch this app. Maybe it just didn't grab the new ones. Okay. <laughs> Slider spy, don't ruin tomorrow's video, okay? <laughs> that would be a Chad YouTube move right there. Uh, have, have my best web browser ever video and be like thorium and then the next video is why thorium isn't the best web browser <laughs> oh that would be so hilarious yeah uh, youtubers got a youtube man okay i'm pretty sure this should work let's let's just close that chatterino oh this is firefox that's why it's not grabbing some of it It's not grabbing the XDG variables because this is a flat pack. <sighs> That's probably why. And if we go open link, it doesn't doesn't work. Okay. It doesn't work in flat pack. Let's see what uh let's see what it says for that. Portal use. So we wanted to use the XDG portal. So we should be able to just run this. Copy. Let's go. We could do flat seal too. Flat seal would do the same thing. Uh, flat pack list. And then we just go paste. Grab our Chatterino. Okay. Close that. Shift this to there. Shift that over. So now with this, let's see if it's able to grab. Still not able to use the portal. Hmm. I think at this point, flat pack list. Let's uh let's just go flat pack grab flat seal. Flat pack flat seal. Alright. Let's just grab that guy. We'll install it and launch it. And and also we probably should test to make sure it works outside of flat pack. I might just be jumping to a conclusion here. Um let's go ChrisTitus.com. Let's go cat. Or let's echo it. All right. Well, I don't think that worked. Oh, no. It, it definitely worked. <laughs> All right. That's funny. Uh, I was like, well, it's not working. <laughs> it's because I wasn't actually seeing it. This is kind of cool. Oh, by the way, I did change a few things with this uh, portal in, in the crystalize.com where it uh does auto scale for mobile phones and stuff now i'm past stream that someone mentioned that the tabs <laughs> yeah all right cool so this does work now we can launch a flat pack list uh can we just launch flat seal yeah flat seal and we can go chatterino you got the layering which is fine debus session we i think it's we do want it on the debus session do we not i think so and then we should also want access to XDG. Where is it? Other files, host, no. Libraries, no. Persistent. We could put it in the environment right here if we wanted. All right, it's well known system bus. Portals. But I don't see that. 
So there's the XDG comp file that it does look like it's giving access to. Um, I'm okay with it having access to my home folder, but it should uh, give access to XDG uh, doo -doo -doo, org free desktop portal. I think it's just talking between the free desktop portal in there. So I think we need to run the XDG command in the, X, uh, the, the portal. So I think the free desktop portal is a different flat pack that is installed alongside of it. So if we look over here, we go flat pack, um, flat pack list. Uh, that's not going to show me anything, is it? Um, we do have, see, we don't even have the portal installed. So there's flat seal. What did I run? And if we look at this, what portals do they have? <clears throat> so typically X XDG desktop. Okay. That's already installed. After installing, Flatpak should automatically use XDG desktop portal. I have permission to read default web browser. Do not have direct access to many of the system flows including default web browser this can by design enhance security to handle this desktop service okay so technically this should i don't think we used the user command last time when we did this um yeah, let's just do a list and then we'll type this in kind of weird weird thing we have to do so it has access but so be it so now it has portal access. Let's quit. Let's push this over. Negative. All right. Well, I got to say, that's an interesting little bug. It's like it wants to use uh, Firefox or something. Um, and I set the XDG web browser in a flat pack to something else. I think I can just use an environmental variable. Already done that. Let me see if there's like such a little thing, but sometimes it's the littlest things that are the hardest. <laughs> okay. It does have this. So what I'll do, I'm thinking I'm just going to hard code it in. I know that's not the best solution, but it's a solution. So let's go flat seal just to show this off. Uh, We'll come down here to variables and then this is just going to be browser and where this is you know it might be trying to access the browser now that i think about it it just doesn't have access to run oh all system binaries executables it just doesn't have access to that so let's give access but then we can also just come over here and go which orium browser then we can grab our browser executable toss that here this would be just be a backup as well so we'd have access to this and it would have access to this variable and it should be fine just to make sure let's also give access right there so if you only wanted to give access to the browser you could actually turn off this right here for the executables and it would be able to see it and we should be completely covered now. Um, is there a save? I don't think there's a save. Okay. So that should be completely covered. And we should be able to quit out. Chatterino. And if we did it right. Click on this. And. Open link. We didn't do it right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's. It's just the way it goes sometimes. Fix it another day. Shut it down. I got dinner coming up. So thank you all for coming out today. What a fun one. I know it was a little bit weird with Lutris, but I actually wanted to just kind of learn the Lutris install scripts. And I wanted to make one for this indie game that I found that I thought, hey, it'd be really cool to make a little install script for them because I know uh, those small communities, they don't typically get that kind of love. And I really just thought hey that'd be a fun thing to learn for my own personal knowledge but also to kind of help out this small game uh help foster maybe maybe a couple linux users 
<laughs> so with that guys thank y'all have a great weekend if i don't see you before then but you're gonna see me probably tomorrow if you want to jump in when i'm playing this old school game uh, we'll probably chat a bunch it's really slow paced and that's just how these games rocked so i love them especially streaming them because of how slow paced they are so all right y'all take it easy have a great one. Oh, look at that that's so nice being on linux my synergy just works i can just be like bye <laughs>